Lee huffed in relief as the gunshots were heard in the, off in the distance. He wasn't sure what was going on. He had just been attacked and chased by walking corpses, and now he was in the backyard of a house. The gunshots must have drawn the walkers' attention. Banging and thrashing at the fence seized as the walkers' groans were starting to fade. They were going in the opposite direction. Lee groaned as he got to his feet. The pain in his leg reminded him that he needed help. Hello? Anybody? Lee called out. He suddenly heard crying coming from within the treehouse. It sounded like a young child. Lee walked over to the treehouse and he climbed up the top. Inside he found a young girl. He seemed to be a little over two years old, was what the child was. Hi there, Lee said with a kind of smile. The toddler opened her eyes and she said, You not daddy? The girl whimpered. There was fear, confusion, and sadness in her eyes. I know I'm not, but I'm good. I won't hurt you, Lee said. Promise? The toddler asked. I promise. Come here and let me hold you. You must have went to sleep and had a bad dream, Lee said. The toddler obliged and she crawled over to him. Lee picked her up and cradled her in his arms. She looked to him with two wide eyes. She was analyzing everything about him. With the toddler content in his arms, Lee decided that it would be best if he looked over her. It seemed that she had been trying to live up here, but someone must have put her in the treehouse in hopes that someone else would find her. There was some food, water, toys scattered around the treehouse. Alongside some blankets acted as bedding, a diaper bag, and a couple of pacifiers. Lee looked down to the toddler who was still staring at him. She seemed that she was ready to cry again. The girl then just spilled juice and applesauce all over her, and there was a terrible odor that accompanied it all. The girl must have not been potty trained at all yet, but it, it's not like she could have been. She didn't appear to be old enough to do so yet. Let's get you clean up, Lee said. He grabbed the changing mat and unfolded it, using his free hand. Then he placed her on top of it. He took off her small dress and, and fought tights. He knew they were both dirty and would have to go inside and fetch her some clean clothes. Lee started to change her as she laid on the changing mat. Well, my name's Lee, Lee introduced himself. What's your name? Clem, like fruit, the girl replied. You say Clem? As in Clementine? Lee asked. He wanted to make sure that he got the, her name right. The baby nodded in response. That's a beautiful name, Lee said. The toddler smiled in response. Lee finished cleaning her up and placed a new diaper on her. He checked the diaper bag for her new clothes, but there were none. He would have to go inside. He wasn't going to put her back in her old dirty clothes. Lee picked her up and cradled her in his arms. Will you be okay if you stay here so I can get you some new clothes? The toddler nodded, nodded her head and said, You be back? Yes, I promise, Lee said. He placed the girl on the makeshift bed and started to climb down back to the ground. He couldn't believe his luck. He had always wanted to be a father, and now he was going to get the chance. He was going to be a father figure to the baby until he, he could figure out what happened to her parents. Lee went towards the house and went up to the porch. He wasn't sure if the person looking after the toddler was still inside and if that person was hostile. He opened the sliding door and said, Hello, anyone in here? Lee looked around and had noticed that the kitchen had debris everywhere. There was also some blood on the ground. Looks like these people needed more help than me, Lee said. He then looked around the room for any signs of life, but it seemed abandoned. A loud beeping then caught him off guard. He nearly jumped. Lee then looked into the source of the beeping and surprised to see that there was an answering machine. Lee groaned and he went to it. The pain in his leg was intensifying. He pressed play and the machine's monotone voice was heard. Message 1. Left at 5.41 p.m. Hi Sandra, this is Diana. We're still in Savannah. Ed had a fight with the crazy guy near the hotel. I rushed him over to the ER. Anyway, he's not feeling well enough to drive, so we're staying an extra night. So thank you so much for taking care of Clementine. And I promise that we'll be home before the end of your spring break. Message 2. Left at 11.15 p.m., the machine announced. Oh my gosh, finally, Diana frantically said in a voice. I don't know if you've been trying to reach us. The calls are getting dropped. They're not letting us leave Savannah and aren't telling us anything. I needed to get back to the hospital to check on Ed. 
Message free. Left at 2.30 a.m., the machine said. Clementine, we love you. We love you. We love... Diana said with a sob in her voice. There was a sound of sirens in the background. It was soon interrupted by the sound of gunfire. Then nothing. There was nothing left from the other end. Lee sighed. Damn, he muttered. He then looked over towards the stairs as he could hear the sound of a growl. There was a walker upstairs. Lee panicked as he had nothing to defend himself. And as soon as the walker got down the stairs, it would have no trouble in killing him. He wouldn't be able to overpower it because of his leg. He looked around the house for a weapon, but couldn't find anything. He ran to the kitchen and looked through the drawers. He finally had found a cutting knife. It was something that he could use to defend himself with. He turned and saw the limping horror approached him. It was an older girl, probably college age, but her body had since decayed from hideous creature. It reeked of death and its eyes were milky white. Oh gosh, Lee muttered. The walker stumbled towards him, but he killed it without much effort. He figured that much as the skull was important of the creature. After all, he had killed one in the forest by shooting one in the head. Lee breathed out in a sigh of relief and then went upstairs to check the rooms. He found Clementine's easily, though, and along with Ed and Diana's room. He also had found a bathroom. Maybe I should give Clementine a bath. I just hope there's running water. Lee then went over and turned on the faucet, but nothing came out. Of course, I'll have to give her a bath some other time, Lee muttered. He knew that the toddler would be feeling better if she had a bath, but he couldn't just make water appear out of thin air. He left the bathroom and went into Clementine's room next. He just needed to grab something for her to wear. It wasn't too cool outside, but he knew that it did cool her off in the evenings. He looked around for the closet and did come across a pair of shorts and a t-shirt for her to wear. It wasn't that cold out yet, but if she did get cold, he could wrap her up in a blanket. He also grabbed a pair of socks and shoes for her. He then took clothing in his hand and began to limp his way downstairs and outside. His leg was getting more and more irritated. He needed to find some form of medical treatment soon, which that would mean he would have to take a risk of the toddler's life to help find help. Lee then climbed up to the treehouse and saw Clementine playing with one of her plush toys. She had a pacifier in her mouth, which was rather adorable. Clementine, Lee said in a kind voice. I got you some clean clothes. Come here. The toddler looked over and smiled underneath her pacifier. She went over and mumbled something under the pacifier. What? Lee said with a chuckle. He removed the pacifier so he could hear her. You're back, the toddler said with glee. Of course, I told you I was coming back, Lee said. Sandra not come back? Clementine said with a frown. No, she didn't. She's in a better place now, Lee said. Evan? The toddler asked. That's right, Lee said with a smile. He was glad that the toddler was taught about Christianity. He placed her on his lap and he helped her get into her new clothes. There we go, comfy, Lee said. Yeah, Clementine said in response. What do we do now? Lee then looked around and since she didn't have that much food left. How about you go play with your bigger toys and that are in your room and I'll gather some stuff for us like food, water, and some other things. But mommy and daddy aren't home. I not leave, Clementine said. I know, baby, but it's too dangerous to stay here. It'll be safer if we leave, Lee said. I'll leave them a note and tell them what happened. You would be okay with that. Clementine then looked for a moment before she nodded her head. Good, Lee said with a smile. He then looked over the treehouse and gathered up a couple of the toys, the remaining food and water, and the blankets and pacifiers. He put them in a diaper bag, but it was a tight fit. All right, Lee said. I'm going to take this stuff down first, and I'm coming up for you, okay? Clementine nodded her head in response as Lee groaned and went back down the stairs from the treehouse. His leg was throbbing in pain, but he had to fight through it. Once he was low enough, he dropped the diaper bag on the ground below, went back up to retrieve Clementine. Once he got back to the top, he picked her up and carried her down to the ground. He continued to carry her as he went inside her house. It may have been an irritated his leg, but he didn't care. The girl's safety is what mattered to him more. If he sat her down, she may bolt from him. He placed the girl on the ground once they reached to the top of the stairs. Then, minutes her feet touched the ground, Clementine ran into her room. Lee chuckled a bit as he watched her. He wished that he had some of her energy. 
He went up to the parents' room and looked around. Perhaps Ed had a gun somewhere in the room. After going through a couple of drawers, he noticed that one of them was locked. That has to be it, Lee muttered to himself. He searched for the bedroom for a key, but it didn't take long until he found a key in a pillowcase. He used the key to open up the drawer, and he found a handgun along with some ammo. That will work. He picked up the both items and went back downstairs. He laid the gun on the counter and made sure it was out of Clementine's reach. Lee went back outside and dropped the diaper bag, grabbed the diaper bag. He would have had to find something to replace it, like a backpack. He would need to pack some extra clothes, diapers, wipes, and a few more toys. And a diaper bag was just too small to contain all of it. Lee just went back inside and went to Ed and Diana's room. He smiled when he found heard Clementine was having fun. Some of it was baby babble, but there was also some audible words. It made him smile. Lee limped over to Diana and Dead Ed's room and looked around for a backpack as a toddler could be heard in the next room, giggling and playing. She was an adorable baby, and if he could, he would go into the other room and play with her, but he had to get everything packed up and ready before nightfall. Plus, he needed to find help. Lee huffed as he got downstairs with a heavy backpack. It had everything he needed for Clementine. It had food, sippy cups, water, a couple of bottles, a couple of toys, summer clothing, winter clothing, diapers, wipes, a changing mat, a couple pacifiers, a couple bibs, some plastic spoons, a blanket, and surprisingly a handheld leapfrog device. All right, I guess that's everything, Lee said. We leave now, Clementine asked. She had started to follow him once she had gotten some of her clothes out. Lee crouched down and, and he didn't seem too as intimidating to the toddler. Yeah, I'm sorry, hon, Lee said with a gentle voice. The toddler whimpered a little and said, I scared, I not want to leave. Aw, it's going to be okay, Lee said as he brought her in for a hug. The girl cried out a bit as Lee held her. It'll be okay, I'm going to do my best to look after you. I not want to leave home, the toddler said, with a sob in her voice. I know, sweet pea. I know it can be scary, but I'll be there. I'm going to help you, Lee said. You be like daddy? The girl asked. Yeah, in a way, I'll be your guardian, sweetheart, Lee said. Clementine sniffled and said, okay. That a girl, Lee said. I'm going to grab the backpack and then I'm going to come back over and pick you up. We need to help find for my leg. Clementine nodded in response, and then she released the grip on Lee. The man walked over and picked up the heavy backpack. He grunted as he did so. Okay, your turn, Lee said. He walked over to Clementine. He picked up the light two-year-old girl and placed her on his hip. He made sure to use the uninjured side to carry her. All right, let's go, he said. He limped all the way to the door and opened it. And to his surprise, he saw two men outside. One was stocky and the other one was skinny. They were in front of a car, which was one of the many cars that were blocking the road. Aw, oh, man, one of them exclaimed. I ain't going anywhere to Mama's at this rate, the stocky man said. This stinks, the first man said. Ah, oh, man, it ain't hot dish, the stocky man said. They were leaning against the car. Lee's eyes widened. He knew what they were trying to do, and they were trying to move the car. Lee grunted as he walked forward. His leg was throbbing in pain. It wasn't good. Regardless, he approached the two men from behind. They good? Clementine asked. He had forgotten to tell her that she needed to be quiet. Both men jumped hearing the voice. However, they calmed down when they saw it was just Lee and Clementine. Holy shit! You scare me half to death, the first man said. Lee chuckled and said, Yes, honey, they are good. He then looked over to the first man and said, We needed help. The man sighed in relief and said, Sorry about that. I had no idea you were there. I'm Sean, Sean Green. I'm Lee, and this is Clementine, Lee said. The stocky man smiled at Clementine and said, I'm Chet. Clementine gave a shy smile in response. Do you know what's going on here? Lee asked. I don't know. Anyone knows completely, Sean said. Look, if you can help us move the car out of the way, we can get you and your daughter out of here. She's not my daughter. I'm just some guy, Lee said. Just some guy? She's alone? Sean said. Um, excuse me, a voice was heard. All three men jump upon hearing the voice. Lee then looked over and shielded the baby in his arms. He wasn't so sure who he was dealing with.